guys. Hi, thank you guys for being so patient. Welcome to Famous Problems in CS. Um, this is our last workshop of the entire hackathon, so we really, really appreciate you guys being here today. So, my name is Hoki. My name is Keshti. And I'm Terry. And we'll be going over like two main problems in CS that's pretty famous, pretty applicable. Oh, oh, we didn't, we're not using the microphone. There's like feedback going on. Yeah. Can you guys still hear us though in the back? Everybody good? All right, perfect. Let us know if we need to like re-clarify anything. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just get started. Okay, yeah, so the first problem that we're gonna talk about is the dining philosophers problem. And like, just like the um, previous workshop, um, this is like gonna be like a more discussion-based workshop, you know, where like, we're just like introducing these problems and like just getting like wetting, wetting your appetite basically. So let me introduce the dining philosophers problem. So basically assume that um, you have, you know, this big meeting with all these philosophers from all around the world gathered and they're gathered at a round table. And um, each philosopher um, basically can do two things during the meeting. They can either eat their food, which is placed right in front of them, or they can, you know, think as philosophers do. Um, and in order to eat, there are some conditions. So as you can see, there is um, basically, let's say one fork that's placed in between each philosopher. And in order to eat, the philosopher has to have both of the forks. It has to have the fork. He, ha he or she has to have the fork to the left, to his left and right. And so what this implies basically is that not every philosopher can eat at the same time. And so the question is, how can we design an algorithm or a way of thinking for each philosopher so that um, they all get to eat at some point and none of them start? Um, in CS, this is actually um, a question about concurrent algorithms and synchronization. And the reason for that is um, we have to design an algorithm for each philosopher in order for them to you know, get their job done, right? But in that algorithm, um, they're also, it may also like require shared resources. And though in this case, those shared resources are those, are those forks. Um, each philosopher has to make sure that those resources are available before it can complete its task. And so like this is actually a classic problem in CS, but um, you know, we're just gonna abstract away like all of like the CS details for now and just like think about this problem in like the fictional sense. Yeah, so um, one solution to get you guys started would be, would be this one. So let's think about this. Um, what if we say for each philosopher, um, he's gonna think until the fork on his left is available and then pick, when it is, he's gonna pick it up. And then when the fork on the, his right is available, he'll also pick it up when, when it's available. And then when he has both, both forks, he'll eat for a fixed amount of time. And when he's done eating, he'll put his right fork down, put his left fork down, and then you know, keep thinking or wait to eat again. So does anyone notice like a little bit of a problem with how this philosopher is like going about? Yeah, in the back. Yeah, exactly. So what happens if all the philosophers pick up the fork on the left? Then they'll all be waiting for this like right fork that's never going to be put down since each philosopher is, you know, waiting on the other fork, right? And it doesn't matter if you like change this algorithm to say, okay, yeah, um, I, this philosopher is always going to wait for the fork on the left first and then right or right first and then left. So can anyone think of a possibly better solution? Oh yeah, go ahead. Only pick up the forks when both are available. Okay, so um, I guess like that's one possible solution, right? But let's say what hap um, Let's say like the philosophers, you know, they're a little bit like slow physically, and they're they're getting a little bit old, and you can only pick up one fork at one time, right? Because let's say in like CS, yes, you can't execute two two lines of code at the same time, right? So you like have to say, okay. Um, I want to pick up the left fork and then the, like immediately pick up the right fork, or I want to pick up the right fork and then immediately pick up the left fork, right? But um, there's still a small chance that you know I see the left fork. Okay, I'm gonna go pick up that right fork, and then the philosopher to my left was like, "Oh, never mind, I'm taking this." Can someone think of um, a different solution? And I guess like one way to make this easier is, um, what if I restrict my problem to only having four philosophers and four forks? Can anyone think of a way to? Um, solve the problem that we just described? Yeah, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. Um, 
anybody else? Okay, so you'll notice that like in this picture, all of the philosophers are numbered and all the, all the forks are numbered, right? So um, what I was trying to get at here was, and you were right with the even and odd thing. Um, what we can say is, what if all the odd, philosoph odd numbered philosophers always start by picking up the fork on the left and then the right? And then all the even numbered philosophers started picking up the forks on the right and then the left. So in this case, we would have philosophers one and uh, philosopher one would always try to pick up fork number two. And philosopher two would also start with fork number two. And so in this way, we know that between philosophers one and two, um, only one of them can start the fork picking up and eating process. Whichever one of them holds fork number two will then go on to try and pick up the other fork. And the same goes for um, three and four. So three and four will also always be competing for um, that fork on the bottom, fork number four. And, and then after that, they'll try to pick up fork, forks um, either three or one. And so um, that's like one method that we can uh, use to solve like this idea of you know deadlocks where each each philosopher has one fork and nothing is getting done right um can you guys think of like a way to possibly generalize this for any number of um any number of philosophers like even or odd and like you can take a take a minute to think about it. and i guess don't be sad if you don't think of the answer because people thought about these for a long time <laughs> Yeah. Always pick up even numbered forks first. Um, okay. I think I think you're like thinking a little bit too much about this um even and like even in odd case, um, is there any way you can ex extrapolate it to like not having, you know, even an odd? So like, let's say like, I go back to my previous diagram. We have five, philosoph five philosophers and five forks, right? Um, so one of those philosophers is gonna have two odd numbered forks. What should he do? Kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. Would you like alternate it? Like, as in the even or odd, so like, mm -hmm. the solution of like, pick up the left and then the right, and then the next iteration would be to pick up the right and then the left. So it would be like the even odd solution for everyone, no matter what the first one is. Um, do you mean like the first philosopher does left, right, and then the second philosopher does right, left, and then the third philosopher does left, right again? Okay, yeah. Um, I guess like what I three, and we basically know that in order to pick up um, fork three, he has to be holding fork two, and this is going to go around all the way until the end. But um, do you guys like see any issues like with this design? It's actually like some of the similar ones as before. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, in a, in a way. Um, so if you go back to, um, if you go back to like the beginning, basically, this solution tries to solve the fact that between philosopher zero and philosopher four, um, you know, you have like both of them are going to be required to pick up fork zero before fork one, and then fork one before two, fork four before three, and or like basically in like in that order. But that doesn't really make sense because we kind of have like the same problems where you know some uh, philosophers can basically like cause that deadlock situation, and then another problem with this is. Um, a problem called starvation. So starvation in CS is when we have certain um, processes in our algorithm that are pretty much continuously getting um, all the resources and that one philosopher can keep both of the forks for an indefinite amount of time 
while the other philosophers, you know, just never get to eat because we never describe the system for, oh, if this philosopher has eaten um, for a certain period of time, then he should give up that fork to someone else. Um, so can anyone think of a way where um, each philosopher is like kind of forced to, you know, give up their forks after, you know, like after they've eaten or something? This is like the, like the last like big part, I guess. Okay, this is, oh yeah, go ahead, Charlie. So we can set a threshold for how to make the options and all have to count the threshold. And then we can set the random question. So I would call this, let's say it's two minutes, right? Uh -huh. And we will use any time to count the threshold of the whole, any of the units of the threshold. Okay, yeah, Um. I think that's, that's one way, um, and it definitely it, it definitely improves the fairness by a lot. So you're saying that um, after a certain amount of time, no matter what, I have to drop that fork. Um, but I guess like what I'm trying to get at is um, with your solution over time, I think um, all those philosophers will generally probably get to eat, right? But there's not as much of a guarantee in that um, a philosopher can, you know, after their like, you know, two minutes is up, they can drop their both their forks. But if their process happens to, you know, require those forks again, they'll just pick it right back up, right? And so like, yeah, you're giving a chance for the philosophers next to them, but there's like no guarantee that a philosopher is not gonna hog all of the forks um, that are next to them. Um, but yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really great idea. And it's kind of getting into um, the last and final solution that I have here. And so in order to avoid um, both deadlocks and starvation while maintaining fairness for all the philosophers, here's what we can do. Um, we can label all the forks as clean or dirty. And so dirty means that um, a philosopher has just ate with it. And in the beginning, all the forks are labeled as dirty and given to um, philosophers with a lower ID. So if we number of the philosophers, then um, you, each fork will be assigned to the philosopher with a lower number. And what happens is um, when a philosopher wants to eat, they're going to rescind a request or basically they're going to nudge the shoulder of, you know, the... Uh, philosopher to its right. So this does break the rules a little bit um, in that, you know, I initially didn't tell you that philosophers could do any communication or ask for forks from each other. Um, but basically when they want to eat, they send a request for the forks that they don't have. And after eating, um, after eating happens, those forks are considered dirty. And so the rule here is a philosopher will only give up a requested fork from someone else if the forks that he's um, currently holding are considered dirty. And so that probably implies that he just ate and that he's gonna um, give up his forks since we know that that philosopher just ate and the two philosophers to his left and right didn't eat. And as a gesture, um, you know, we'll say that each philosopher um, before giving back a dirty fork, they're gonna clean it so that um, the next philosopher can use it. And so do you, can you guys like see how like the clean and dirty system um, kind of helps um, with like the fairness. Um, someone just say like the simple reason. I kind of like already said it maybe, but um, yeah, so basically like, you know, when a philosopher eats, um, their fork gets marked dirty. And we know that when, when a philosopher has dirty forks, he automatically gives up his fork um, and cleans them back. And so like, that's kind of the reason for um, like, the niceness of the solution is that it allows for um, both philosophers to obtain forks from one another, as well as make sure that one uh, philosopher doesn't like hog all of the forks around it. And so like that kind of like concludes um, this problem, but like the main idea of this was um, you can extrapolate um, like these thinking ideas um, to a lot of problems in CS where, you know, you have multiple things uh, or processes competing for the same resources. For example, um, like let's say you have, um, you know, you're working on that like Google Sheets um, for some project and you know, it's collaborative, right? And multiple people um, want to access that same cell and edit it. So like, what kind of things are you gonna be considering if you're working on a project like that? You know, um, there's different users and all of them may be trying to access the same kind of information. And so like, if you're interested in problems like these um, and you're taking CS at Vanderbilt, 
um, you can consider classes like operating systems or distributed systems where we're thinking about you know these concurrent algorithms as well as um, like the synchronization problems that happen when um, multiple uh, algorithms are being run at the same time. Yeah, and so then I'm going to hand it off to Keshvi and Saki to talk about the next problem. Okay. Also, you guys can try out. Oh yeah, um, I have this link um, where you can try out basically this um, problem um, in like an interactive like web simulator where um, there's a you know collaborative algorithm and a non-collaborative algorithm. You can basically see um, like the effectiveness of each, and you can also modify a lot of the parameters such as like the rate at which each philosopher goes hungry and how fast they get full. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our second problem for this workshop. Um, it's called the two generals problem. And I'm just going to introduce it very briefly. So basically in this problem, we have two armies and we have a city. And basically army A is, general A is in charge of army A and general B is in charge of army B. And these two generals have been ordered to launch an attack against a city, but they have a few constraints that prevent them from attacking just yet. So the first one is that the city is situated at the bottom of the valley and the generals have each set up camp on opposite ends of this valley. The second constraint is that it's impossible to reach the other end or communicate to the other end of the valley without traversing the bottom first and going through the city. And the third is that the generals must attack simultaneously to be successful and an, an uncoordinated attack would be unsuccessful. So in this problem, we're also going to suppose that General A is going to try and send a messenger to General B. Just so both generals can send messengers back and forth to each other, but they have to go through the city essentially. All right, so now we're gonna start like a discussion on this problem. Does anybody have any idea of like some possible outcomes um, of General A sending a message, a messenger to General B? Like, does anybody have any idea? Like, what are some possible outcomes of this? Anybody wanna take so yeah, just to reiterate, um, if we could go back to the oh, slide, okay. just in case. So just to summarize all of that, what Kesh yes, just told you guys, we have two armies at the end of each valley and they are on the same side. They both want to collaborate with each other to kind of overwhelm the city in the middle. What they want to do is they want to send messengers to each other so that they can coordinate an attack together. So General A, who is leading Army A, can send a messenger to Army B. General B can also send a messenger to Army A. And these are our constraints as you can read, read them again. And right now what we're trying to do is, well, what is a good way for, what is a good algorithm in which army A and army B can communicate with each other to coordinate an attack successfully? So just to start you guys off, I think the most primitive solution or the first solution that you might think is, well, what if army A sends a messenger to army B and then as soon as army B gets it, army B can send an, uh, a messenger back. Well, one of the constraints that I'm not, I think we mentioned before is that the city is on the opposing side of this so-called war. So if the city accidentally intercepts one of these messengers, then there is a miscommunication going on. Like maybe army B would never get messenger A, uh, messenger A or maybe army A won't get received like army B's re response, response yeah. basically. So the way that they would actually do a coordinated attack is if Army A and Army B kind of Army A and Army B both know when to attack and when to attack. So this is where like it comes in where we can like discuss about potential solutions on what Army B, Army A, or Army B might be able to do. So does anybody have any ideas in which we can go about solving this problem? Also, I doubt anybody does know this problem or is familiar with this problem, just judging from <laughs> no one raising their hands. But if you do know the solution to this problem, we ask that you don't ruin it for the rest of us and just let people who don't know the answer lead the discussion. All right, so let me throw another potential outcome and then maybe we can discuss about whether it's a probable solution or not. Okay, so what if, 
we send, what if Army A just continuously sends messengers to Army B until Army B receives one of the messengers? So say 90% of the time those messengers just like get caught by the city, but that also guarantees like 10% of the messengers to get to Army B, right? Then technically Army B should be able to receive at least one of those numerous and thousands of messengers, and they should be able to do the same thing and come back. So if that's a potential solution, what are kind of like, can you guys think of ways that that might not work out? Like why that might not work out in this specific scenario? Do you wanna? Absolutely. That's definitely one. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. definitely one problem with this. Can anybody think of another one? Yes. Uh, there's, okay. Uh, at least one of the Yeah, these are uh, a better market. That's true. Yeah. Right, right. So both of you guys are absolutely correct. So in that particular scenario, one, we're assuming that we have infinite resources, but you know, nobody really has infinite resources. So that's one of the problems of just like, just continuously going until you might, you might succeed. And also as somebody said in the back, we're also assuming that this would somehow guarantee that at least like one of the messengers would even go through. But if you even think about it, well, that also means that we have to guarantee that army B can send a response, but that also depletes our resources. And we also have to guarantee that their messenger comes back as well. So that was another potential solution. Does that inspire anybody to come up with another solution that we might be able to think about? So in this particular scenario, we can't. We're assuming that that is the one singular path between A and B. So anybody have any thoughts maybe? Or does anybody have a solution that they think might not work out? Yes. Gotcha. Okay. So if I could reiterate that, and can you make sure if I got that clearly? Are you saying that army B, army A, and B would meet at the city, kind of? Right. So. The problem with that might be the reason why we're trying to send messengers to each other is to coordinate an attack together, right? Because we're assuming that in this specific scenario, Army A and Army B are kind of like separated amongst each other. Like they can't communicate with each other without sending like a messenger and saying, okay, we want to attack tomorrow at nine o'clock in the morning. So in your scenario, how would they, how would they be able to know when to come down? Oh, interesting, interesting. Well, let me just be devil's advocate really quick, uh, really quick. So if both of the messengers try to meet at the city, wouldn't that also mean both messengers could be caught at the city? Something to think about. Could potentially be intercepted. Also, assuming, let's say that they're not caught and that they do return with their messages, how do we know that their messages have not been tampered with or they haven't been like, you know, corrupted while they were in the city. So yeah, if you guys could also think about like if from any of the solutions that other hackers have given, if you guys can think of like improvements or maybe something that you think are actually improve upon, like make sure to like say those out loud. I think one of the biggest things about like computer and algorithms is to really talk through all these different cases and edges. And from building upon it really just solidifies an algorithm in general. But on that note, um, does anybody else have any ideas on thoughts or maybe like attack plans? Okay, because I can also give one more that I have read about. So what if, what if army A and army B are, go ahead and sets out, okay, what if we just send 10 messages? So they are uh, like general A and general B knows that each, general will be sending 10 messages. And if all of them go through, they can assume that they've received the messages and they can coordinate an attack like that. 
So I don't know if I explained that really well. So let me go ahead and just explain it to you guys. So say army A goes ahead and sends a messenger, army B sends a messenger again. And then they would repeat that for a certain amount of time that they predefined. So, well, in that case, even if army A is like 10 messengers, of the 10 messengers, only like two or like even one of them would get through, then army B would receive that message. And vice versa for like RBB, even if all of the messengers from RBB doesn't get through, as long as at least one of the messengers gets through, Army A will be able to get that information as well. Does that, does that solution make sense? Did I explain that or no? no? All right, so with that, there is one slight problem with Army A sending a messenger, Army B sending a messenger and back and forth for like a certain number of times that they have predefined. Can anybody kind of identify what that problem might be? Yeah. Exactly. exactly. No, that's absolutely perfect. Um, so yeah, in that case, in the 10th messenger scenario, say Army A has sent a messenger and Army B received him. Then Army B would send their last messenger, but say their messenger got caught at the city. So Army A never received that messenger. Well, in that case, Army A is over here thinking, well, Every time we sent a messenger, let's say like they got caught at the city, but every single messenger got through, Army A is supposed to assume that they're gonna going to go ahead with the attack because their messenger already left and went to Army B, but Army B is over here never getting Army A's message, so they wouldn't go. So there's like a discoordination in the attack. So that's like a couple of scenarios. Does anybody have any last thoughts on what might be potential solutions to this problem? All right, so all of you guys are actually pretty correct. Um, actually, let's go ahead and summarize the different elements. Really yeah, quick. just because that was a lot that we just covered, we're just gonna like lay this out. So basically, when General A sends a messenger to General B, there is going to be one of two, like two outcomes that could happen from this. So the first is that General A sends a message to General B, but they don't get a response back. In this case, what the problem that we like see with this outcome is, can, does anybody know what the problem is with this? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, the problem with this is how do we know General B received General A's message? Additionally, even if General B did receive the message, if General A does not know that they received the message, then the two generals can't attack at the same time. So like they need that feedback and verification in order for them to coordinate the attack successfully. So this is an unsuccessful outcome. And then the second outcome is that generals A and B successfully send the messenger back and forth. Does anybody know what the problem is with this one? Yeah, exactly. So how do we know that General A's message has not been tampered with? And how do we know that General B's response is authentic? Because if the messenger was intercepted in the city um, and just sent back, like how do we know that the response is from General B? And how do we know that if it did get to General B, how do we know that it wasn't tampered with when it went through the city? So in this scenario, the attack would also be unsuccessful because they wouldn't be able to coordinate. So like basically given this, we can actually conclude that this problem is technically considered unsolvable today. So you guys should really not feel bad. <laughs> Sorry we put you through that. <laughs> yeah, you guys should not feel bad. Yeah, no, for sure. And like the two possible solutions that Cashby basically said are, so every single solution that we've discussed here today or any other solution that you might've thought of we can be categorized between the two. And as Kashki has explained, none of them really guarantee a success. So there might be potential solutions that might be better than the others or might guarantee a better success, but this problem has been proven to be, there isn't a solution that can guarantee 100% of success. So that's why we call it impossible to solve or unsolvable. But let's also talk about like why we're even discussing this problem in general. So this 
the two generals problem basically explores two party communication over an unreliable channel, which in CS or just in, in the world in general, because we do live in a world of technology, this problem comes up fairly often, like between servers, just between like different apps, maybe between like the client um, and the back end. And for example, a, a good example that I found online has to do with, for example, like food delivery apps. So everybody here, I'm, I'm assuming, as a Vanderbilt student has been using Grubhub a lot lately, right? Or maybe like throughout the year. Well, say for example, you went on Grubhub and it already has your VUNet ID, it has your Vanderbilt credentials. So what you would do because it's connected to your Vanderbilt credentials, which hopefully you're using your Commodore cash or meal money. Um, but what you would do is go ahead and pick a restaurant and you would go ahead and order whatever you want, right? So say you went ahead and ordered something and you paid your money you got a little confirmation email saying that your order has gone through and you have paid successfully. But then you get an email from, say I went to Michelangelo's and I ordered pizza through the Girl Health app, but you get a message from Michelangelo saying, sorry, we didn't get your order. So in that case, your first thought might be, okay, if my order didn't get through, maybe I'll just order another one because I really want pizza. Or you'll just be really sad and you'll just be like, okay, well, maybe I just won't have pizza for tonight. But what might have actually happened in that scenario is what if Michael Angelos actually did receive your email or received your order, but in the back end, in the server end of like Michael Angelos servers, something went wrong and the confirmation email coming back sent you the wrong one or it sent you yeah, basically the wrong confirmation email saying like they were supposed to send something along the lines of like we've received your order it's coming on your way it's on your way. But instead they said something else saying that they couldn't do it well what this might lead to is this miscommunication example might lead to you ordering more or them having like this issue of. Not being able to process their orders properly. And this is just a very short example that might be applicable to us to where we can see like this miscommunication being like a big deal. This has actually been like an example in like Great Britain. I think like in 2018, there was also a food delivery app called Deliveroo. And this Deliveroo app actually had this problem of like miscommunicating back to the client end. And what ended up happening is that the company started sending multiple orders of the same order to their clients. And the customers would still be like, charged like two or three times of what they initially ordered. So the clients are unhappy, the company's unhappy, and overall in general, we're wasting time, we're wasting money. And this is basically why the two generals problem is kind of like really important because it really just talks about the importance of communication between two ends or even multiple ends. So that's why we discussed this today. Actually, on that note, because we do have a little bit more time, does anybody want to come up with an example, maybe in a real life scenario, where like this kind of miscommunication, where like the two generals problem might be applicable to like, in your life, maybe? Have you ever like, done something that you thought your message has gone through, but like on the receiving end, um, they either didn't receive that message or you got the wrong message? No, yeah, absolutely. Actually, that hits a little bit too close to home because that actually happened to me once. But yeah, so just to reiterate what like our hacker just said is what if you sent a message and you've made a promise with your friend saying that you were, you're going to grab lunch the next morning, but suddenly you have like an appointment that comes up, but your phone breaks and that's like a signal of like miscommunication. There's like a little bit unstable connection between your two like ends. And in that case, I'm sure like with today's technology, there's like different ways that you can come about like solving that solution. But in terms of using your broken technology like with phone, it's a little bit hard to solve that problem. Yes. Right, exactly. Also another one that kind of hits really close to home as another college student. 
But yeah, just to reiterate that, like, I'm sure the professor, when they sent like a message in Brightspace, for example, like they expected us to get like notifications, but us, maybe they sent out the notice a little bit too late. Maybe we weren't on Brightspace. Um, so just to having too many ways of communication also like reemphasize like the importance of communication between two like ends. So that's a really good example too. Anybody else might want to bring up some stories in which they had a really bad example of like miscommunication. Also, has anyone like anyone who has an iPhone like in iMessage has anyone ever like had a message fail to send, but it actually sent? Because that's happened to me before. And like, or like sometimes like when I restart my phone, certain like failed messages will just send again every time I send it. Yeah, so that's like another example where it's just like completely, <laughs> yeah, unreliable. For sure. Since we're using a lot of technology during these days, I feel like this type of miscommunication will occur a lot in a lot of like software engineers. Maybe you guys in the future will be able to try to like at least decrease the amount in which like these miscommunications might happen but i also think as like ai gets like better um in the future like we're probably going to be having more like ai like sending our messages for us and like receiving our messages for us and so like that'll also bring up kind of like like this problem will kind of factor into that as well because there's going to be I feel like in the future there's going to be like a problem with like not knowing whether or not like the actual person received your message or not and whether or not you received a response from them um or if it's like from an actual bot instead but yeah that's just another example mm -hmm. yeah any last thoughts or questions maybe about like either of the two algorithms that we went over today yes I have very limited experience on interviews. Uh, um, no, if they want to ask you anything like I this. Just, I don't think they would do that. <laughs> yeah, if anything, they'd probably ask you like solve very solvable like coding questions. This is definitely more theoretical. Um, and this is just if you're interested. I would be very, very surprised if an interviewer asked you a question like this and then they're suddenly like, oh, don't worry about it. There's not really a solution. I just wanted to hear your thoughts. And um, interesting company. But yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Yes. Okay, I got like the first part. Do you mind repeating like? Yeah, so like my general and like them trying to explain it in the class, and then like how like my computer or like my like, computer. Like, I think that would have been like if they want me, then I would have yes. said like maybe even like the original. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, it was like blockchain was seen as like sort of a, yeah. The general problem was used to like explain blockchain, yes. And there is technically like some proposed solutions involving like the blockchain to this problem, um, but it is still like right now considered basically well, unsolvable. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah, know, that's definitely a good point for sure. Thank you for bringing that up. I think we, we definitely read upon it, but then we didn't bring it up because it would then like bring up another like thread of like discussion. Like blockchain. But absolutely. Yeah. Just to reiterate, if you guys are interested in like blockchain, there's a huge discussion about like two generals following blockchain being involved with each other. Um, I definitely recommend you guys to like check it out. But thank you so much for bringing that up. All right. Any other thoughts or questions, maybe? All right, guys, don't forget to get your points. Since this was the last technical workshop, this is your last chance to get those points. Hopefully you guys are earning a lot of points. I just want to reiterate, like, thank you guys so much for coming to these workshops. It's really, it means a lot for us that you guys are here and like you guys are interacting with us. Hopefully these have been like useful. Hopefully you guys are getting a lot out of them. We will be sending out materials from all of the workshops later on, hopefully by tonight slash tonight. 
Um, but other than that, thank you guys all so much for coming. I hope you guys have a great day. We're gonna have lunch soon, so make sure you got food. Other than that, thank you so much. Have a great day.